Hey, this is Brian with WorshipTutorials.com. For uh, a long time now, I've wanted to do a sort of a studio tour for you of uh, <laughs> the spare bedroom that I call Worship Tutorials Studios. So um, my wife and I, my family, uh, we recently moved. Uh, and so I've been, you know, kind of getting this room situated. I do have a room that I devote totally to worship tutorials. And I just wanted to show you, I have a lot of questions uh, from a lot of you about um, what kind of gear I use. This is where I do all these videos and uh, everything that, uh, that I make comes out of this room. So I'm gonna show it to you now. All right, so the first thing I'd like to show you is uh, what I look at when I am sitting in the chair doing a uh, like an acoustic guitar video so this is sort of my workspace <laughs> I don't have really a desk over here I just have this big couch and uh, you can see this over here is sort of the heart of the uh, of what happens as far as the recording goes you can see that uh, I'll just give you a close-up view here I sort of run everything from a MacBook Pro and uh, I'm doing handheld shots here, so you'll have to forgive me if the if you see the shaky cam going. And uh, I use Logic Pro, which you can see is uh, is going right now, recording my voice. Um, and then uh, the, all the audio runs into this little guy right here, which is a Universal Audio Apollo Twin Duo. I love this thing. Um, I have some uh, UA plugins that I use, um, most notably the uh the api channel strip i bought that one and uh, i use the ocean way studios plugin for uh acoustic guitar and i think it works very well um in my opinion you can never have too many of these headphone adapters uh I, my guess is that i don't know however many there probably one of those actually works <laughs> probably that silver one it's a sony it probably works can't ever have enough capos obviously uh, i love g7th Capos. Same with picks. You gotta have a lot of picks. Um, so I use uh, various cameras. I actually, this right here is a, a Blackmagic production 4K camera. I have two of them. The other one is in my hands right now. It's what I'm using to film uh, this with. These are awesome cameras. Um, they do 4K. They just have, they have a great image quality in my opinion. Um, and they uh, they use these these 2.5 inch like laptop hard drives. I'm actually transferring some files right now, so I'm multitasking. I used to use this Canon 70D a lot, and uh, I don't use that as much anymore. I use it as a still camera because I'm I'm into photography. Um, and let's see, there's a lens right there. That's a Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4, and uh, the one I'm using. Most of the time that I have on the camera right now is a, uh, a Sigma 17 to 55 2.8. So that's pretty much the video stuff. And then I edit in uh, Premiere Pro by Adobe. Um, let's move on to audio. So first thing I'll do is I'll show you uh, the seat that I sit in all the time. Oh, one more little video thing. I left it over here because I was using it. This is a Blackmagic Video Assist, it's upside down. But uh, basically you run an SDI or, or HDMI out of any camera and it acts as an external monitor and you can also record to it with a, an SD card, which is very cool. So, uh, let's see. One thing that's very important with video is lighting. Many of you have asked me what I use. You probably can't see them because they're so blown out. Let me do this. Let me stop this down. There we go. Now you can see them. I'm sure that was some sweet video production right there. Uh, they are just these huge, massive bulbs. You probably It's probably like super blown out. You probably can't see it. But uh, um, this is just facing the room. Usually I have this thing. I have them kind of set up on these... Uh, well, now you can't see those either. These kind of mounted on the ceiling, I have these stands for them. I can swivel those arms around so I can kind of position these lights anywhere I want to in the room. But, uh, but yeah, that's what I use for lighting. And I just kind of move the lighting around um, to wherever I want it. Uh, 
These are some sweet monitors if you're in the market for some monitors. These are little Tannoy 5 inch monitors. Um, and I just have them snaked around. And there's the other one over there in the corner. Uh, kind of moving on. This is the other sort of video wall that I use. Let's make the lighting, the exposure a little better. So I use this wall a lot for videos. Um, you can see I have some sound paneling around and I built that myself. I just built, uh, I built the frames and then I just put um, some corning soundproofing, like fiberglass kind of material in there. And then I put fabric around them and I just measured it out so that it would fit the wall. And then I painted the uh, logo on the wall. And so let's move on to uh, guitars. There is the acoustic guitar that I use in almost every video. That is a Martin D35. It's from 2000 and I can't remember. It's getting a little old by now and I, I love this guitar. I've had it for a while. I bought it used um, back when I lived in Oklahoma. But uh, I've had that guitar and I put it in a ton of videos. It's probably, I don't know. I don't ever want for another acoustic guitar. I will say that. I have no desire to buy an acoustic guitar as long as I have this one in my hands. It has been refretted by a local guy named Mark Kane. Um, if you are in the Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area and you're looking for a guy to set up your guitar, he's the guy. All right, moving on. We have the Line 6 Helix. Um, I used to use a, a Pod HD500X a lot. Now I use the Helix. I really like the Helix. Um, we have patches for the Helix available. It's a very cool piece of gear. Sounds great, but I love amps as well. So currently I've got two amps. I have this Agape Tribute 18 watt amp. We have reviews and demos of this amp on the website and uh, it, is a, it is a seriously nice amp. All hand wired. Um, it's not cheap, but uh, you kind of get what you pay for, in my opinion. And uh, speaking of that, moving on, we have the Panama Tribute, a Tribute Series maybe? I don't know what they call it. It's the Conqueror 5 Watt. Uh, it's like a little Fender Champ. I have not had this amp very long. Um, it's kind of new to me. I've only had it actually a few days. And uh, so far I like it. Um, obviously it's not nearly the amp the Agape is, but it sounds cool and it sounds great when you run them uh, together, like a, a dual amp setup. They sound really good. I found the Panama sounds better when you crank it a little bit. It kind of gets you that tweed drive sound, but moving on to pedals, um, you can see the current pedal board here. Will Sledge effects. Uh, the white pedal is his white horse. The one above it, the black dual pedal is like a tube screamer boost kind of a thing. TC Electronic Triple Delay, that review is coming soon. And then the little itty bitty pedal is his Will Sledge Slim Drive. And then there's also a Boss RV6. Okay, you can see that I also have a, uh, a cab here. That's just a, it's actually, I, I found this on Craigslist. It was an Eggnator cab. And uh, I took the speaker out and I had a, uh, an Eminence Red Fang speaker, which is kind of like their Celestian Blue clone. Um, it sounds really good. And so you can see I've got it set so that I can mic it if I want to. But I rarely ever run through that cab anymore because I have discovered uh, how awesome it is to run IR cabs. And uh, it's actually a really cool video by um, Pete Thorne where he describes what that is and how to do it. But in a nutshell, I have two devices here, the, the Sur reactive load, and then there's a Coke uh, load box. And I'm sorry if this is a little dark, but there's not a lot of light over there. So, um, so what these do is they'll take the, uh, the speaker out of an amp and they will, the, the Coke uh, load box will actually emulate a speaker, but the Sur reactive load just gives you a line out. Um, the Coke box actually gives you a line out as well. So I just run those both out. You can see that I'm running them right up to that, uh, that Behringer preamp strip, which then runs into the, uh, the Apollo. But uh, basically what you do is then you can run, it's basically like running the, uh, the, the amp 
out the speaker out of the amp, switching it to a line level output, and then running it into, uh, I just run it into Logic, and I apply IR cabinets to it, which is kind of like cabinet modeling. And it, uh, it sounds like a very, very well mic'd, uh, great speaker cabinet. And so it makes it super easy to record amps, which uh, can be difficult, especially at night when you don't want to be loud. Um, this allows you just to be quiet and uh, get a great sound as though you were miking a good cabinet. So let's move on. Let's talk about some guitars, shall we? Okay, so coming around to, uh, to this side of the room, we can see like the guitar area, I suppose. So uh, that's probably super bright up there by the, uh, the window. But anyway, you can see there is a sort of sunburst uh, guitar. I actually finished that one myself it was kind of an experiment it turned out pretty good that thing has porter 9t pickups in it i really like that guitar then we've got uh an old old acoustic guitar not that old i guess it's from about 1999 the first nice guitar i ever built that is a takamini <laughs> ever built ever bought that's a takamini fd 360 sc i believe um, great guitar. I don't use it that much because I have the Martin, so I don't feel the need to use it. This is the Shelton Time Flight. Sadly, this is not mine to stay forever, but uh, we did a demo on that recently. You should check it out. Awesome guitars by Shelton Electric Instruments. Moving on, we have uh, sort of my my trusty MJT uh, thin line that I love very, very much. I use it. This is kind of my main guitar that I use when I play electric. I actually play electric a lot. Um, in a lot of the videos, I play acoustic guitar, but uh, most of the time, like on Sundays, I play electric guitar. So anyway, behind that is uh, my three-year-old son's Squire Mini Strat. Sounds better than you might think, actually. <laughs> Not terrible. And behind that, we've got some more guitars. That uh, that blue one there is a Tele that I built with my grandfather years ago. Um, then there's a Reverend in the middle, and then on the right side is actually just a uh, a '92 Fender American Telecaster. Has some aftermarket pickups. That is a a boss metal zone <laughs> sitting back there I didn't know that was back there all right so if we turn over to this side of the room I used to have a desk over here but I always uh, I wanted to have a workspace uh, because I do a lot of work on guitars I do a lot of setup work on guitars um, and so I just wanted a space where I could do that I changed pickups so I wanted a space where I could solder so I got one of these sort of a workspace kind of a thing and uh, well, there's a plaque YouTube sent to me for 100,000 subscribers on YouTube so that was very cool I need to put that up somewhere and I've just got some random stuff there's an old telly body that thing I built with my grandfather as well along with the uh, the blue one over there we built a blue one and a pink one and the pink one didn't play very well, so I just kind of took it apart. I finally broke down and bought a, uh, a nice soldering station because I was tired of using cheap junk that didn't work. So this is a Weller, I don't know, whatever this thing is, you can see what it is there. ES, what is it? An ES, WES 51. It's a, a pretty great, pretty good soldering station. Moving around, some more sound paneling, as you can see, the door that goes out of the room, the printer that never works because printers never work. And uh, sort of on the back wall was a little art project of mine. Um, I wanted to take some albums that were formative for me. Sorry, you got some really bright light sort of in the frame. And. Uh, and make like a, a, a wall out of albums that, that sort of shaped my um, listening experience growing up. So on the top is Jars of Clay, the original Jars of Clay album. Then there's U2, however you say, Octune Baby, <laughs> however you say that. 
R.E.M. Out of Time, man, I listened to that album so much. That one and U2, I kind of, my cousin had those albums and I visited him when I was young. I don't know, probably like 12 years old and uh, they stuck. And then there's the Beach Boys, Endless Summer, sitting there behind the speaker. Um, my mom had that on an LP when I was a kid and I watched it over I watched it. I listened to it over and over and over. I still love the Beach Boys because of that. But anyway, those are four albums that uh, that really shaped my listening experience growing up. So there you go. That is my spare bedroom studio. If you have any questions about anything that you saw or uh, didn't see, please ask in the comments. Uh, one thing I didn't show you is uh, I meant to, but I just forgot. I didn't show you the microphones that I use, uh, and I get a lot of questions about that too. So, the first one I want to show you is this. Uh, this is a Shure. Let me pull this off of here so you can see it. If I can, there we go. I grew up working on a farm, and uh, <laughs> my dad farmed, and uh, he's also a school teacher. But I always remember my dad. It must have left an impression on me, like when he would tighten something like a bolt down with a wrench. It was like. If you had to loosen that thing, it was all you could do to uh, just crank that thing loose. And I think that rubbed off on me because anytime I tighten something down, I like it tight. Like I, a pet peeve of mine is mic stands like this one that are loose and wobbly. I hate it. So um, I always just crank stuff down really tight. Sometimes it gets me in trouble because if something's made out of plastic, you can break stuff. But uh, but yeah, anyway, I don't know why I just thought of that. But anyway, this is a Shure SM7B. It is a dynamic microphone. Um, I always kind of like to think of it like an SM57, which most people are familiar with, like on steroids. Um, but it's a great, great vocal microphone. Um, and vocal mics are, are, uh, are kind of interesting. You got to find one that works well with your voice. This one works well with my voice. I have kind of a lower... I don't know if you could think of me almost like a baritone or something like that, but um, I don't have a really high airy voice. Um, I have a lot of mid-range in my voice, uh, and this mic just works really well. For any kind of like a spoken kind of video that I do, like this video or uh, like a tutorial video or a review or anything like that where I just want to pick up my, my speaking voice, I use this uh, lapel mic right here. It is an Audio-Technica. I'm looking at this module down. It, it ha has like a, it's not wireless. It's got like a, an XLR thing. This thing says AT8537 on it. I'm not sure if that's the model of the microphone. I can put a link in the description, but um, it's a nice mic. It picks up the voice very well and it's very articulate. I really like it. If I do a video that has uh, a couple people in it, like if it's a review, like uh, Fuller and I recently reviewed that uh, Shelton guitar, that Shelton uh, Time Flight. I'll put like a room mic up and uh, I use this. This is a, an AKG C214 and um, great mic. Uh, pretty budget friendly mic for what you get. Um, I also use this a lot. Like if I'm gonna mic my acoustic guitar, if I wanted to record that for anything or mic vocals, uh, this, is a, this is a great mic to do that. It works really well for, for a variety of sources. It's a large diaphragm condenser. So um, those are the mics I use. So like I said, uh, I hope this was, uh, was cool. I always like to see it when people kind of go behind the scenes and show you uh, what happens <laughs> when, off camera, I guess. And uh, I like gear, so I just kind of like, I like watching videos of, of the kind of things people use and why they use it. Um, and so I hope this is helpful. I'll say this too. Uh, I have a lot of gear in here and I have a lot of uh, gear that's, that's not very cheap. And uh, I know a lot of times that if, if people are wanting to start out, I get asked a lot, like, what would you do if you were just, what, what, what should I do if I just want to record some videos? I do not suggest buying uh, two Blackmagic 4K cameras and a an Universal Audio Apollo. <laughs> like, if you're just going to start out, um, that stuff is not cheap. And uh, I've acquired this over many, many years. And Worship Tutorials has turned into a business, so I have income and uh, it's allowed me to uh, to buy some nice things, which allows me to just keep making stuff. But you certainly don't have to have uh, like really high end gear. And I don't can the gear that I have is is I would call it prosumer. It's not truly professional 
level, although some of it is getting toward that. But um, but you can start out with an iPhone um, or or a can you know a, a phone camera. Cameras, phones these days take awesome videos. In fact, I was about this close to doing this whole video uh, with my phone, and it probably would have been a lot easier if I did. But um, I have my workflow just down so much that if I turn on the Blackmagic camera and pull it into Premiere, the the correct you know the color correction's all done already and everything. So, um, but uh, you you want good lighting, and you can uh, the easiest way to get good lighting is to sit next to a window when the sun is up. Um, but uh, other than that, the lighting that I use is pretty cheap. Um, I can link to below to the lighting, to the bulbs that I use, and I just have cheap umbrellas and cheap fixtures. Um, and I've mounted them creatively, but you don't have to do that. Uh, good lighting is key, and then uh, any kind of camera that these days that comes on a phone or anything is gonna give you a uh, pretty high quality. If you wanna step it up, you can buy like a DSLR um, camera that'll do video. Um, if you really want to step it up, I really like the Blackmagic products. They work well in a controlled environment. If you want to use them for like run and gun stuff, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. But, um, but yeah, that's the stuff I use. And as far as, uh, as far as uh, audio and guitar stuff goes, um, I have the privilege of having some really nice stuff. But uh, you know, we have a video on on the best cheap uh, guitar and amp that uh, people like to. Uh, Poo, poo on that video but uh, <laughs> I still stand behind what Bryce and I talked about in that video um, you can buy some great used guitars for around $350 um, same with amps and uh, you can be set to go and uh, you can just stick an SM57 in front of it and record it and the other thing you would need is a uh, is an audio interface and you can get an audio a decent audio USB audio interface for like $150 and uh, you can be off and running making high quality stuff and then as you grow um, you can just sort of acquire nicer and nicer uh, gear so anyway let me know if you have any questions about the stuff uh, that I use um, about the studio space uh, thanks for watching I'll see you next time bye